uh, I looked up a guide, and I, uh, apparently that cave I went into in the mountain, it, I am supposed to be able to, uh, get through there. I don't know, I just, I missed the door or something, I guess. So, that's annoying, but, uh, at least I know now. Uh, probably have to fight a bunch of enemies, though, again. Unless, uh... Okay, I, I guess they just don't respawn. Uh, oh. I, uh... Okay, no. Thought I could jump in the water. Anyways, I think it's over here. Somewhere. Oh, is this? Ah, uh, see, yeah, I, I have a really hard time seeing where the doors and stuff are in this. Oh, am I, uh... Okay. I thought it was going to just, uh, like, sweep me away, and I would just end up, uh, downstream somewhere. One of the NPCs said, uh, this guy is, uh, very weak against magic. I don't know if Robo's laser counts or not. That's good enough, I guess. Was. Anyways, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Thank you. 
Yeah, I guess when he's kind of crunched over or whatever, uh, he's like this, he's ready to counterattack. And I just gotta wait. There's anything in this house. There's, there's got to be an item or something in here somewhere. You know, I'm surprised they don't have a scene where you, uh, I don't know, you find like Luca's dresser and I don't know, you get caught peeping in or something, like at Luca's panties or something. That seems like it would be totally something that would, uh, you know, happen in a JRPG of this era. Okay, the, the spot I was at is different than this. It was a different... Okay, uh, now I get it. Uh, okay, I was at, like, the monster town. I thought that... Uh, the layout was kind of the same, so I was under the impression that that was this place, but time had changed it. Uh, you know, because we messed up the past or whatever, and so... But no, that's... Uh, okay, I get it now. They're, uh, they want Lavos to come back so he can like mess everything up, uh, and then he eventually does, and then he messes up the future. Uh, so I just have to go here and then I can get into the machine and work back to the end of time. Okay, I get it now. Uh, so I guess, uh, I know other, I'll go through the other games I played this year. Second one. 
once I talk here. I, I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of talking. Gonna send me back to the Middle Ages or whatever. Oh, or not? Uh, okay. Bruce Canyon, 680. Eden Village, 1080. Protodome, that's the past, the mean square. Okay, so this. Medina Village. Okay, so that's Monster Town. This is Human Town. Uh, this is Middle Ages. Okay. Or, yeah, Middle Ages, I guess. Whatever. Oh, right, okay, so I'm back at the place, the time when the, the queen got kidnapped. And here I can uh, stop Magus from resurrecting Lavos. I've already been here, of course, so all the... Uh, chests and stuff are going to be opened. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh wait, the bridge isn't broken yet, I guess. Right, because they're gonna go across and fight. Um, yeah, I guess I want to go through here. castle and procure the food supplies, I guess. Uh, yeah, so for other games, uh, I guess I've got them organized by console or whatever. Um, uh, for PC, uh, I've got, let's see, and this is kind of more or less in order that I played them throughout the year. I just kind of add them on. Uh, I thought they had said that the legendary hero was at the bridge fighting, but uh, yeah, this is the king's room. Uh, anyways, uh, there was Invisible Ink. Uh, this was somewhat decent. Uh, I don't really care for the XCOM games, and part of the reason I don't like them is the insane amount of randomness. Uh, you know, you can hit an enemy and kill them, and then that, you know, wins you the battle, or you miss, and then they kill you, and you, know, you lose the battle, and your team gets wiped out, and it just completely screws up your save file. Uh, and I, I can't stand that. Okay, so I need to get to the southern continent find the boy with the hero medal, to find the sword that will save them all. Uh, so I need to get through there. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't... 
Yeah, I don't really care for the XCOM games. Uh, I've played, well, I guess game, I should say. I've only really played the one kind of modern remake. Uh, Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't care for it. All the randomness just killed it for me. Um, Invisible Ink is kind of that, but uh, a bit more random generated in terms of the actual the maps, which I don't mind. But uh, the actual combat is... I don't think there was any randomness. It's, you know, uh, completely deterministic, which I, I much preferred. Uh, there is randomness in terms of like, okay, if you open a chest or, or an item thing, you know, do you get which weapon you get or whatever, but, uh, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't mind that. So uh, it was pretty good. Um, it's kind of like Faster Than Light or uh, yeah, similar games. That kind of uh, uh, it's kind of like a roguelite. Start the game, you you can finish it in just a couple hours, and then you go through again. You get like completely different characters and items and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it was it was pretty fun. Um, I don't know it didn't quite click with me the same as Faster Than Light did. I had played that ton when I first got it. Uh, you know, I beat it over and over and over. And Invisible Ink, I, I beat it a couple times. I, I think it was like twice or maybe three times, and then I was like, okay, that's that was good enough. Uh, next one that I didn't mention uh, in my top ten. Uh, Minoria. Uh, I got this on GOG. Um, I had gotten this couple of years ago now, um, and I finally decided to play through it. I had thought it was going to be kind of like a Metroidvania, and it kind of was, but it was extremely linear. Yeah, I thought he gave us one jerky. I don't think that's enough for everyone, but uh, whatever. Yeah, so it was a very, very linear Metroidvania with a lot of talking and story stuff, and I I didn't really like it that much. Uh, you know, it was okay. Uh, you know, the controls were pretty good. The combat was okay. It was just I don't know, a very kind of simple linear Metroidvania style, but not really Metroidvania, but you know. Kind of linear. Uh, I guess kind of like Cave Story, but not as good. Uh, the, the art style was really good, though. I like that. Uh, it has a very cool kind of like 3D anime style. Uh, it's a, a very nice art style, but yeah, okay. Anyways, um, uh, next was Rain World. This is one that was very close to ending up on either my top 10 or bottom 10 lists. 
it, uh, I don't know, it's one of those games where I can see there being people who absolutely love it. And I, I mean, that's where I heard from, uh, like I've heard some other, like some YouTubers and stuff absolutely love it, and others like absolutely hate it. So I think, uh, I think that's like a very valuable kind of game to have. I think that's, you know, having a game that a few people absolutely love and everybody else hates is far better than having just another okay game that everybody likes but nobody loves. And, uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of like a Metroidvania, but there isn't like a lot of power-ups and stuff. It's just kind of you explore and, uh... uh yeah, I found the controls to be kind of janky. They're kind of... I don't know, intentionally kind of odd, but they're still strange, so... I don't know, it's... It didn't quite click with me, but I can see there being a lot of people who absolutely love it. I'm guessing this guy's got uh, the same resistances and stuff. Okay, I had thought ice was uh, effective on them for some reason. I maybe. You should have been with me, but... Anyway... Oh, that's doing pretty good damage, I guess. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Uh, yeah, this is, I don't know, another similar game where I'm glad it was made, but it's not quite for me. Uh, I don't know. What? I guess the top half has got different resistance. But yeah, it was, I played through it on like one of the easier levels. I think I got to the end, I didn't end up... I didn't end up beating it a second time or anything, uh, or doing 100%, but uh, I just kind of, you know, I got through it and I was like, oh, oh no. Uh, should have done that. But yeah, it was, I don't know. I'm glad it was made, and I know there's people who absolutely love it, but it just, uh, I just don't really care for it that much. Um, that's kind of all the PC games uh, that aren't on like my top or bottom 10 uh, that I didn't talk about already. Uh, I did play quite a few PC games, but uh, most of them ended up being top or bottom, so...
you up. I'm a bit confused. I would have thought that that monster area would have been just south because, like, they were fighting them on the bridge. Like, why is this town okay if the monsters were apparently had a, enough of a foothold to attack over the bridge? Okay, so I'm guessing he's at the inn right now. probably restock on my uh, phonics. Alright, um, I guess that's kind of everything I can do in there. Um, this is a mountain area yet. Check this out. Must be the woods that were overtaken by the frogs. Or another town. Okay. Okay, I can uh, I can change her stuff from here. Right, I didn't know I could do that. Okay. 
It's weird that there's so many towns, like, right next to each other. Okay. Uh, cave east of the mountain. I don't know what meals you can make out of jerky. Okay, so there's the cursed woods, um, this. Okay, the Denodoro Mounds. I guess I'll just go to the mountains. That seems to be what everyone's talking about. And it seems to be pretty good at kind of like blocking off areas that I can't do anything yet at. I, oh yeah, one of the guys did mention that there was goblins with hammers, and uh, when you burn their weapons, they're very weak, so I guess these are hammerless goblins. Uh, let's see, what are the next games I played? Uh, for 3DS, despite uh, modding it and everything, I only ended up actually playing uh, Shin Megami Tensei, um, I already talked about. Next is uh, for the Genesis, well, there was Fantasy Star 2, which I talked about, and then 3. Uh, 3 was much better, I thought. Ah, uh, that's the kid. Oh. I should bring him to with me. Ah, right. Yeah, I need to do in order to do the fire attacks. Yeah, I don't think there's any other way I can do one right now. Uh, 
guess I need to go grab Luca. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I uh, have to get her or anything, but uh, like that guy was pretty tough, and if there's, like, you know, a, a battle against four of them or something, that could be pretty bad. I assume I have to go get Luca from the, uh, you know, the end of time. I don't think there's any way to just change right there. Um, yeah, so Fantasy Star 3, it was uh, it was much better than 2. Um, I know people, a lot of people don't like it. There's a lot of people who consider it like the outlier and, uh, you know, 1, 2, and 4 are like the good Fantasy Stars or whatever, but uh, I, yeah, I much preferred it over 2. Uh, it was much less grindy, a um, lot lower, you know, difficulty or whatever. Uh, the the maze, you know, the the dungeons weren't these insane mazes. Uh, they were actual places. Uh, the right the. Uh, the actual picking spells and stuff during combat was still, unfortunately, a bother. It, I think it used a pretty similar system to 2. But it, uh, because the battles were easier, it was, uh, you know, you could just mash the attack button and it didn't really matter. Like, if it's, yeah, if it's, typically if a mechanic isn't going to be good, it's okay if, so long as it doesn't matter. And that's kind of how that ended up being. You just, you just don't use magic. Uh, which is unfortunate, but it's better than, uh, having to mess around with the menus. Uh, the generation system was pretty cool too. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, you start off like with the first generation. You, you, know, you go through the game, uh, beat it normally, or beat part of it normally, and it's a couple hours or something there. Uh, and then you pick one of two characters, one of the two female characters, for the main character to marry. Uh, and then, depending on who you pick, Oh good, it, it actually did that. I was a bit worried that he talked about burning their hammers and that was just fluff and it wasn't going to actually do anything. And then, you know, going to get Luca would have been pointless. But, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's much better. Uh, yeah, and so then you pick who you want to marry and then that determines what your the second generation kid uh, is like. Uh, I think, because... You either marry a human girl, and then your second generation kid will be full human and not able to use any kind of spells or anything. Or you marry the... I can't remember what they're... I think, can't remember if they're Newmans or what they're called, but they uh, they can use magic. So then he'll be half Newman and he'll be able to use some magic. Uh, it had mentioned using a whirl uh, to dispel whirl things or whatever. 
I don't know if he was talking about these guys, but uh, well, I killed them anyways. Yeah, and then after you beat the second generation, you get to pick again between one of two characters. Uh, and so then that basically, then that determines what your character is like in the third generation. Uh, so it basically gives you four characters in the last generation that you can have. Uh, you're in the third generation, and then I, uh, I probably should have checked it, but I'm pretty sure then there's another generation. Uh, so then that gives you basically a total of eight different characters that your main character can be, like, at the end. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was... I can't remember whether it was four or eight. I probably should have uh, double-checked that, but... Uh, it is quite a few anyways, and all, all of them have different endings and stuff. Uh, Yeah, they all have different endings and kind of slightly different gameplay and stuff, so that was a really cool idea. It, uh, I don't know, it'd be neat to see more games do something like that. Well, I know, I guess, uh, one of the Fire Emblem games kind of did that, where uh, you choose who your first generation party marries, and then uh, that creates all sorts of different kids, uh, which that was cool. Uh, I only played through one playthrough, uh, though, because it is cool, but it's still mostly the same game, so it's more for... I guess if you were really, really into it, you could do it multiple times, but uh, for me it was, okay, I beat it once, that's good enough. Uh, Menus were much better too. They weren't as although picking spells and stuff was still a bother. Uh, the you know mo moving items around and buying stuff in shops was much better. Uh, the uh, it was much less tedious to do that. And the yeah, I didn't like the visual style as much. Uh, it's this kind of like ugly brown, like trying to be realistic style. Uh, like two had at least the kind of uh, nice anime style for like the characters. Although one was much more technically impressive. Like it looks miles ahead. I think it it came out on the same console just like I think a year or two later. But it is so much. You know, there it looks like there's ten years of difference between them, not like two, uh, in terms of the actual like quality, the visual quality, even if the style is, I think, worse. So yeah, that was three. Uh, I had yeah, so I played one, two, and three now. I'm, I've never played four, and I do hope to play through that sometime. Uh, hopefully, maybe next year I'll play through four. And yeah, of course I would... I always hope that they'll make another Fantasy Star game. Either just like a Fantasy Star game, or make like a... Fantasy Star Offline, like, uh, I don't really care for MMOs anymore, but I do like Fantasy Star Online, and I wish they would just make an offline version of it. Uh, just same kind of art style as, like, the GameCube one, uh, but just make it offline. And, like, that's something I, every once in a while, I'll just play through, oh, I don't know if I should have gone down here, uh, yeah, every once in a while, I'll just make a new file on like the GameCube version and just play through till I you know beat dark files or whatever. Oh that's pretty good actually. There. Yeah 
Yeah, and I would love to have just like a, a new, just a completely offline one, or maybe something kind of like Dark Souls, where it had a... That'll be good for Robo. Yeah, something like Dark Souls, where it was mostly offline, but it had kind of some online components that you could ignore. That would be... I would just love it if something like that were made. And uh, no, I haven't played the uh, Fantasy Star Online F2 Rebirth or whatever. I haven't played it, but and I, I don't intend to. I, I don't know, I may sometime just download it and give it a try, but uh, I, I don't really care for MMOs anymore, so... Probably not gonna... design of those guys, the bird ninjas. It's interesting that Chrono always like starts the battle. Like he doesn't speed up and then you know go, he just gets to go instantly, which is I wonder if that's something that they specifically coded in where Chrono always gets to go first, or if it's just an artifact of the way the game works, like, uh, you know, the fastest character gets to go first and then everyone else kind of catches up or whatever. Alright, uh, I think I'm gonna stop for today. Hopefully, yeah, I guess I got another three hours in today or so, so hopefully just a couple more days and I can beat this. Uh, yeah, there's no way this is coming out before the New Year's, but oh well.